Yo, yo, it's Hootie Hoo, and this is the champ and up section of my Rocket League progression guide. We have finally made it to the top of the ladder. This section will contain some of the advanced and many times more fun mechanics. As always, this guide is focused towards ranked solo queue, very general, and just my opinion. First, we'll cover some mechanics and skills you should be focusing on at this level with some training recommendations to improve these skills. The second part will consist of strategy and focus points as well as some typical bad habits. All right, here we go. We have made it to the coveted purple ranks, nearing the top of the mountain. Before we begin, I want to say that you should be proud of what you have already accomplished. You are in a very elite group of players, the top three to four percent of players to be exact, which really is incredible. It's very easy to look at high level players or pros and get down on yourself but to have made it this far is impressive in itself. It also means that progress from this point forward will be much more difficult than before. With that being said, let's dive into the mechanics and skills for this section. First up, we have double touches. I'm guessing this isn't new to you, and if it is, that's okay too. But champing up is when you really need to start developing some consistency with double touches. There are a few different variations of double touches and they are all far more difficult to defend than a shot straight on net. Double touches require a pretty high level of aerial car control. There really is no shortcut to improving aerial car control, so just get to the grind. I've referenced Kepert's YouTube channel a few times throughout this guide and I will again here too. His aerial car control, advanced aerial car control, and elite aerial car control videos are a tremendous resource for improvement. I've also included the training pack, Difficult Wall Shots by Poquito. I love this pack because you have the freedom to set up your shots however you want to practice them. You can hit it off the backboard and immediately follow it up for a double touch. You can air dribble it into a backboard double touch or even do a ceiling shot variation. Second, we have redirects. Redirects come in infinite variations and are some of the most rewarding and fun shots to hit. Just like double touches, these can require a high level of car control, so don't be discouraged if it doesn't click right away. I have included another training pack from Poquito called Redirects. Third, we have backboard clears. I briefly touched on wall play earlier in this guide, but now it is an absolute necessity. You must be able to effectively defend the backboard to continue to rank up from here. Players are much more consistent with rebound shots, so you cannot give them that opportunity. Booming backboard clears are also an easy way to get counterattack goals. Many times the opponents will be pushed up waiting to take the rebound shot and can be caught off guard by a huge clear. The training pack I have included for this is backboard clears by Rizzo. Fourth, we have difficult wall shots. At this point in the ranked ladder, wall play is something you should be comfortable with. You must be able to effectively clear, shoot, or pass the ball from the walls. Again, I recommend Poquito's Difficult Wall Shots training pack for this as it provides a variety of different shots. Next, we look at air roll and flip cancels. I haven't talked much about air roll shots throughout this guide, but I imagine you are already familiar with this skill as well. Using air roll can seriously increase the power you hit the ball with. Flip cancels are a mechanic that you are also probably familiar with. A half flip is a variation of a flip cancel. Instead of doing a full backwards rotation, you cancel the flip midway through. This concept is the same with canceling forward dodges as well. Flip cancels can provide a faster recovery by canceling the flip animation and in some cases even help with shooting. An example is when a player uses a flip cancel to shoot a ceiling shot. This can provide some extra scoop or lift on the ball by keeping the nose of your car pointed upwards throughout the contact on the ball. To practice air roll or flip cancel shots, I recommend the training pack Shooting Consistency by Whey Protein. Lastly, we have pinches. Pinches can be a great way to surprise opponents by abruptly and greatly accelerating the speed of the ball. They are a great way to get a surprising shot on net or even a powerful clear when low on boost. There are a few training packs for this, but I recommend using free play. Free play will be a more realistic simulation of what you will need to do when performing the pinch in game. While we are on the topic of free play, my last training recommendation is something I call Boomer Ball, which is just a cheesy name for a style of practice in free play. In Boomer Ball, the main focus is speed. 
you want to challenge yourself by going as fast as possible while trying to perform all prior mentioned mechanics. There are a few reasons for this. One is because in game you will not have unlimited time to set up shots or mechanics you want to execute, so practicing in that relaxed and easy manner isn't all that helpful. Two, you have the opportunity to chain mechanics that you are practicing. When I say chain mechanics, I mean using mechanics in succession. An example would be that you are low on boost, so you roll the ball over to the wall, wave dash to gain some momentum, and then perform a pinch. You just chained a wave dash and pinch. Training packs typically set everything up for you, which isn't very realistic when compared to the opportunities you receive in game. You will have defenders challenging you, so you need to be comfortable performing these mechanics quickly. Now let's move on to strategy and focus points for this section. First up we have using time. This is something that all ranks could do a better job of. Many players want to always progress the ball up the field when it is better sometimes to slow the play or even pull back into your own half. This provides time for your teammates to better position themselves or grab boost. It also lures your opponents out if they are all packed into the defending third of the field. You need to begin dictating the pace of the game to fit your team's needs. If you and your team are boost starved, then it may be best to hold onto the ball for a few seconds while your teammates boost up and then you can take a 50-50. Sure, we didn't threaten a goal in this possession, but we also better prepared our team for the coming moments. Second, we have fakes or mind games. At this rank, it is critical to keep opponents guessing. You need to begin to mix up your play style. If you are always full speed challenging as soon as possible, the opponents will figure that out. Instead, mix in some fake challenges to keep the opponents on their toes. Fakes are also a great way to mix up your offensive game as well. They are a way to apply pressure with very minimal risk. Third is challenging, attacking, or defending as a unit. It is very important that the entire team is in sync. If both of your teammates are pressing up on offense, that means you need to play the third man role. If both of your teammates are scrambling to make save after save, you should not be at midfield or in the attacking third grabbing boost. Playing as a cohesive unit is extremely important to continue improving. This is difficult in the solo queue experience, but you can definitely achieve this. The best tip I have to improve awareness is to have good camera work. Making use of car and ball cam as well as rear view cam to remain aware of everything happening on the field is an essential and many times overlooked skill. Imagine a soccer player. They always have their head on a swivel to see what is going on around the pitch. We need to apply that same concept in Rocket League. The next point piggybacks off of the previous. Understanding what is a threat and what isn't. In my coaching sessions, this is a very common topic. Players do not like the other team having possession, so they will become too aggressive defensively, which may result in being out of position. One of the most common examples is when the ball is in your defensive third of the field in a corner. Your teammate is already challenging, but doesn't immediately win the ball. Players think, oh I know, I'll go help him. This is a mistake. When the ball is in the corner, it may be near the goal, but it is not in a very threatening or dangerous position. Just hang back, let your teammate challenge first. If he gets beat or a pass comes across, that's when it's your turn. Another very common mistake is made as the third man. Both of your teammates have pressed up into the offensive third for a shot. They miss or get blocked and are now in the attacking third trying to recover. Your job as the third man is not to win the possession back or to score a goal, but instead to delay for your teammates. You want to give them time to recover and put your team in a better situation to defend. This is a great time to mix in a fake challenge as we mentioned before, because if you dive in and challenge but don't win the challenge, there is no one behind you to support your challenge or protect the net. The last point we look at is possession. Possession of the ball and boost. In Rocket League, there is only one single resource, so it is crucial that you do not get starved of that resource and that you are consciously attempting to starve the opponents. The team that controls the boost will have a much better chance of winning the game. Possession of the ball is important as well. If you can keep the ball from the opponents, they will obviously have a tough time scoring. That means you may not always be pressing up the field onto offense, and you may not want to take every shooting opportunity you get. You need to carefully choose times to attack. By passing the ball around or keeping the ball away from the other team, it can frustrate them as well as disorganize them. 
Once they are scrambling around, that is the time to strike. Alright, on to bad habits. To start us off, we have the inverse of the first strategy, rushing your touches or giving away possession. You want to use the time and space given to you rather than just boom the ball away, turning over possession to the opponents. Second, we have not trusting teammates. We all make mistakes, including you. So when a teammate whiffs an easy save or shot, just brush it off and keep playing as normal. If you begin to assume your teammate isn't capable and are always positioned as if they will mess up, you will miss out on scoring opportunities or be poorly positioned defensively. Yes, you might get scored on due to trusting your teammates sometimes, but you will have a much better success rate choosing to trust them rather than not trusting them. Third is poorly timed flashy play. So now that you are an elite player, you have relatively advanced mechanics and sometimes that's what's necessary to beat defenders or score. I'm not saying you shouldn't use these advanced mechanics like ceiling shots or flip resets. They are great tools to have in your arsenal, but you need to be wise when choosing to execute these mechanics. There is really no way to say when you should or shouldn't go for these things, but read the game and ensure that your team is prepared for you to take a risk like that. These last three points are the most common mistakes among all ranks in Rocket League. They are ball chasing, boost over ball, and raging. These bad habits are certainly not easy to break, but it is very important to try. Ball chasing is an easy habit to fall into. Make sure you are aware of teammates and playing as a unit as well as the game situation. If you have a two goal lead with 40 seconds left, there is no reason to try for that low percentage, high risk shot when all you need to do is run out the clock. This game is more complex than just hit the ball. In regards to boost over ball, you really need to make use of the small boost pads. The big boost canisters around the edge of the field can pull you out of position and you may miss out on a scoring opportunity or get scored on because you chose to go grab a big boost canister. Good boost management and pathing over small pads will help tremendously with this. Last, we have raging something that isn't specific to Rocket League and is extremely hard to keep control of. Any competition is going to bring out pretty extreme emotions and it is very easy to let negative emotions overcome your mental state. My best advice for that is to just step away for a bit. Find what works for you. Maybe it's yoga or meditation. Maybe you go watch your favorite TV show or read a book. Maybe it's YouTube or even a nap. Whatever it is, you need to do something to get out of that angry or tilted headspace so you can see the game clearly again. And that's it. We have completed the guide. This has been super fun to make and a serious learning process. I can't wait to continue to create more Rocket League content and implement some of the things I learned while making this guide. I want to say a big thank you to anyone that watched any of the sections. I hope I have been able to help some of you improve along the way. And if you haven't yet, then go ahead and subscribe because there is more to come. Good luck and thank you for watching.